kind of crazy that we live in probably the richest country in the world, arguably, United States, but yet more people than ever are more broke than ever. At first glance, you know, people from other countries are probably looking at us like, how is that even possible? How can somebody that makes 50, 60 grand a year be broke? Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. A really big one that we've been talking about a lot lately is people have a ton of bad debt. And there's a difference between good debt and bad debt, which is another lesson from the Rich Dad, Poor Dad book. And basically, bad debt is debt that costs you money, and good debt is debt that makes you money. So for example, bad debt are things like having credit card balances, having things like personal loan balances, having student loans, having home equity loans. Those are debts that cost you money every single month, and you're never going to get that money back. Michael Bordnero, folks, how about that? Let me give you a little brief background on Michael there. Um, he's a realtor down in Miami. Well, actually, he doesn't practice real estate anymore. What he does now is that just walking the streets of Miami and making videos like this, this is now his full-time job. And let me tell you, a lot of the information that he has is just really, really good. So last week, I went and I did a video, and I wanted to be like Mike. And uh, so I did a video where we just walked through Spanish Lakes and we talked about what kind of an income that you should have, you know, when deciding to buy a manufactured home and live here in a manufactured home park. So anyway, Lily wasn't with me that day. And uh, when she saw the video, she said, oh, honey, <laughs> she says, I want to be like Mike, too. Okay. <laughs> honey, it's the fun moment I just showed. <laughs> so anyway, to be like Mike, she got her sleeveless shirt. Yeah. Okay. And I'm Unfortunately, I told Mike, I said, hey, Mike, how about sending us some of those uh, bright, shiny sunglasses you have? But we never got a reply. So we had to go out and buy our own bright, shiny sunglasses. So here we are. Uh, we're in downtown Fort Pierce. So this is probably one of our favorite places to be, okay, to come visit, to eat, uh, just to relax. But, you know, here we are. We're making this video like Mike. And so I'm here today and we have Lily. She's our little Mike. <laughs> So everybody, you got to go ahead and check this area out over here. I mean, this is just really, really cool. This place is just full of peacocks, chickens, hens, roosters. I mean, take a look at this. And obviously people come here to make sure that they're fed and watered. You know, and this is, I mean, this is in downtown Fort Pierce, you know, and it's, it's not unusual to see peacocks like this just roaming the streets. Take a look at how beautiful this bird is. Let's go, Big Mike. You ready there, little Mike? I'm ready. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, we're here in the entertainment section of downtown Fort Pierce. There's really no big box stores or anything like that here. Uh, this is all just private restaurants, private businesses. Uh, during the evenings, if you come down here on the weekend, it's all lit up with color lights, live music playing. Very festive, uh, very relaxing. I mean, just a, a great, great place to come and spend the evening. So anyhow, I was thinking back of the video that I made last week when I was telling people, you know, this is what it's going to cost you to move here, blah, blah, blah. And I went through all of that. And then, you know, I, I kind of found it to be a little bit misleading. And, you know, folks, there is a lot of breeze down here. So I hope, you know, I'm going to apologize in advance if the audio on this is going to be a little bad. But uh, anyway, you know, I was saying I, that might have been a little bit misleading because the one thing that I left out and Michael brought up a good point, guys, and that is debt. You know, again, I was assuming on the numbers that I gave you on last Sunday's video that you're moving down here with either very little or absolutely no debt whatsoever. But I've come to find out that that's not always true. And debt is definitely something you're going to have to take into consideration. So a lot of times the realtors, they go and hang up some deals here. Let's take a look and see what kind of deals we have going on here, honey. Oh, here's one here. 995000 Well, here's a real bargain right here. $1,600,000. Uh-huh. 
This one here is a poultry. Uh, well, this is Look at this size. 000. Look yeah. at this size. <laughs> my, that's, my, that's what you get for a hundred grand around here, folks. My star shed, it's more bigger. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like a manufactured home over in Stewart for seventy-seven thousand. Uh, Winding Creek Lane, nice, nice property, three hundred and fifty-nine thousand. And everybody, this is just to give you an idea of what the property values are around here. This one is uh, one point two million. So I really found it interesting, uh, as far as debt is concerned, uh, between the different generations. And what I mean is the uh, the millennials, the Gen X, and of course, people my age who are the baby boomers. So when we're talking about bad debt, like Michael says, let's take a look at the millennials, the ages 25 to 40. Um, they generally have an average credit score of about 658, which isn't too bad, but they have an average credit card balance of $4,651, and they're carrying a non-mortgage debt of $27,000. Now, I'm figuring if they're age 25, okay, yeah, they might have just got out of college, they have some student loans, and I think that's part of it. But as we move into the Gen X generation, the age 41 to uh, 56, it doesn't get any better. You would think that these loans are being paid down and everything, but credit scores for the uh, Gen X average 676. Okay, but the average credit card balance goes up to $7,718 and non-mortgage debt jumps to $33,000. So now as we get into the uh, the baby boomer ages of 57 to 74, you would think, well, you know, people our age are practically out of debt, but that's not true. Uh, yeah, we have a better credit score of about 716, but most of us are still carrying uh, a credit card balance of $6,700, not to mention still $26,000 of a non-mortgage debt. Now, again, I think a lot of that might be due to car loans, which we're gonna talk about here very shortly. So where's all of this leading? Well, first off, where's the highest delinquency rates? And believe it or not, the highest delinquency rates are gonna be in our Gen X, our ages 41 to 56. And I don't have statistics for bankruptcies, but I'm gonna assume that most of the bankruptcies are gonna occur in the Gen X uh, age ranges there. As a matter of fact, California is the number one state as far as bankruptcies. Do you wanna even take a guess what's number two? So if you said Florida, you're absolutely right. As a matter of fact, here's the bad news. This debt that has been accumulated by Gen X, it doesn't get much better when it rolls over into our age bracket or as we get closer to retirement. As a matter of fact, um, bankruptcies for ages 55 plus have doubled since 1994, and we now make up 20% of all bankruptcies according to debt.org. The point I think I was trying to make when giving those numbers out last week is that again, I was assuming that you're coming here to Florida with very little or no debt. And if you are in debt, then you have to take those numbers into consideration and subtract them from the numbers that I gave you last week. Because if I said $2,500 and you got $1,500 in monthly payments before you even get here, obviously that's just not going to work. Unfortunately, I think one of the most bad types of credit that you, you, you could you have uh, that you could take out is car loans. But uh, you know it's a it's a necessary evil. But you know let's talk about car loans here and what the price of cars are doing. Back in 2018, the average new car price was thirty five thousand seven hundred dollars. You want to take a guess of what it is today? As of January 23rd, the average price of a new car has jumped $14,000 to $49,300. Now, I think a lot of that is attributed to electric cars coming out. Um, Tesla is no longer the king. Uh, everybody has thrown their hat into the ring, the big three, uh, all of the imports, everybody now has uh, electric cars. So, and they're not coming cheap. I'll tell you that. But, you know, let's talk about financing because you'd be surprised what the payments are on these particular cars. Now, when I was growing up, 
48 months was all you could take a loan out for. But then um, obviously somewhere in the 1980s, it jumped to 60 months. But let's take a look. If you were just to put down your taxes, your title and your dealer fees, and you finance $49,300 for 48 months, your payment would be an astounding $1,135 a month. But let me tell you guys something. People are actually doing that. They have car payments like that. But now if you would have gone to 60 months, your payment would have come down to $930, which is really no big difference. Where a lot of car buyers are making their mistakes, they're just going in and they're purchasing a car based on a signature without putting any money down whatsoever. Well, you know, taxes, title, dealer fees, and all of that stuff is going to add about $4,000 to the price of the car, which is going to increase your payment by about $80 a month. So whatever numbers I just gave you, if you're going in on a signature, then it's $80 more per month. In addition, it doesn't add any value to the car. You know, it just makes you more buried into the car. For example, if you're taking a loan out like that, the car is going to depreciate so fast that if you're into a five-year loan, you basically got to hold on to that car for about four years and five months before you're in a positive situation where you could trade out of it without owing more than what the car is worth. Where I think a lot of the millennials and the Gen X people are getting into trouble uh, with credit is on car loans. And I'm going to tell you why is because, first off, they're financing more than they could afford. But what's happening is, is that now instead of having just 48 and 60 month financing, now they're 72 months and 84 months financing. So, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're at the dealership. They're, they're telling the guy, I can't afford 930. And obviously the guy's going to come back and he's going to say, listen, I, I can't get get you I can't I can't get you six hundred dollars a month but I could get you in at six hundred and ninety seven dollars a month if you're willing to go 84 months and that sounds more attractive to people who are in need of a car they really want that car and they're letting their emotions take control of what their brain should be telling them so they sign up for it but what they don't realize is that the longer the loan the more interest you pay. And folks, let me tell you, it's not just the interest that kills you on these loans, it's the term. So if you're going for a 84 month loan and you're financing that amount, you're paying $9,200 just in interest. So, you know, when, when these millennials are getting into these car loans, and let's say that in five years, they want to trade out of that car. Unfortunately, they're going to owe more than what the car is worth. So when these dealerships, they go ahead and tell you, hey, we'll pay off any loan. We'll pay off any loan. You know, that's kind of true. They will pay it off. But whatever balance that you owed on that is going to get rolled back into the new car that you're buying. So not only are you purchasing a new car, but you're also purchasing part of the old car that you still owe the bank. This is called being buried in the car loan. And let me tell you, you know, as more and more people do this and they find out every time they go to buy a new car, their payment's going to just continually go up because of all these past balances that they're carrying over onto the new car. It's going to lead to more and more defaults. And again, those defaults are going to follow these individuals once they get into the uh, age bracket of 57 to 74. You know, another thing that you have to take into consideration too here is automobile insurance. And the bad news on that is that Florida is ranked eighth as far as the cost of car insurance. Now, if you're moving from one of these states that I'm gonna tell you into Florida, chances are you might see a slight reduction in your insurance rates or really no difference at all. So if you're coming here from Delaware, New York, Georgia, Maryland, Michigan, New Jersey, or Rhode Island, chances are you're really not going to feel the effect of, of insurance. But if you're coming from other states, you need to be prepared to pay more for your insurance. So the point that I'm trying to make here as far as cars is that if you're coming to Florida and your car is paid off, you're in a good situation. However, uh, please don't tell me that you have a 2002 Saturn with 198,000 miles on it still running good because eventually it's going to put you into that situation where uh, you're going to have to purchase another car. And again, you know, I think your best bet is going to be looking at gas powered cars because I think as the uh, EVs develop, you're going to see prices on gas powered cars drop. You can get into a two or three year old gas powered car. Uh, uh, with low miles on it and probably get another 10, 12 years out of it. But 
you know, if EV is the way you want to go, just to give you an idea, the cheapest car that I found was a 2023 Chevy Bolt EV with absolutely no options on it, uh, $27,500. So if you put down the tax, the title, and all of that stuff, for 48 months, you'd be at six fifteen dollars a month. 60 months, you'd be at $500 a month. Now, you know, the rule of thumb here is to try to put down more than just the taxes and stuff. You know, if you have an extra five, seven, eight thousand dollars, whatever you put down on that, it's definitely going to help you. Because for each thousand dollars more that you put down on the car, it's going to cut your payment down about twenty-two dollars a month. Today, I want to give you guys my own personal example of my property taxes going up and how that's going to affect my own mortgage payments. And trust me, I am not alone, guys. This is happening to a lot of people who bought over the past couple of years. My mortgage payment prior to the property tax bill going up was $2,442 a month and 87 cents. And that includes your property taxes, your insurance, and your principal and interest, okay? Well now, starting on May 1st, my new mortgage payment is going to be $3,044.41. That's a $601.54 difference and a 25% increase in just one year. Here's the other kicker. Since I own a condo, this does not include the HOA dues, all right? So the other thing that I knew about before we bought this condo was that there was going to be a special assessment passed basically right after we bought it, which was pretty crappy timing to be honest. But there was one surprise that we did not anticipate, and that was the actual maintenance fee itself going up as much as it did because we knew about the special assessment, we knew about the property tax increase, but we did not know that the maintenance fee was gonna go from 11.09 per month up to 16.16 per month. On top of that, we have a special assessment of $428.43 for five years, which is a little over 22,000, I think, for five years. And when you add that all up, the maintenance fee is a little over two grand a month. So now our new monthly total that we're gonna be paying for our condo starting on May 1st is going to be $5,089 a month and 46 cents. And it used to be $3,552.71. So for those of you keeping track, that is a 43.2% increase in the cost of ownership for this condo in just one year, guys, which is pretty much astonishing. Thank you, Michael, for sharing that personal information with us. Now, first off, I just want to tell you, Michael does own a condominium. It's not a small condo, it is a large condo. I think he said he had four bedrooms in there. And I just want you to know that these absurd prices and, and, and insurance rates and everything that he's talking about is really happening more down south because the property values down there are just totally absurd. I'm not saying they're any better here, but it's more like in proportion to what it is down in Miami or Fort Lauderdale, which is absolutely the most expensive areas of Florida that you're going to live in. And the reason why I brought this up is because of the fact it just makes manufactured home living even a little bit more affordable. And, you know, going back to Lily's, uh, what do you call them? Your, your, uh, your naysayers there, your critics, your, <laughs> your couch critics, right? <laughs> oh, dude. No, 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 no. Uh so, so uh, oh, the, the sofa critics yeah, okay so, yeah okay. they're the ones that go oh but they could they raise your lot rate every year and you know everybody that's true uh i think you, you probably heard me say in past videos that our lot rent uh starting this month as a matter of fact is going up 50 dollars a month and it went up 50 dollars a month last year that's a hundred dollars in the past two years but you know in the scheme of things with inflation being what it is the cost of materials the cost of labor i mean the cost of everything i almost expected that just like michael said he expected his increase in, in taxes but in proportion to what he's paying you know i'm living here you know, let's see my lot rent's going to be i think it's 798 this year 
so 798 plus all my utilities. I'm still living here for between 12 and 1300 dollars uh, a month. Okay, all in. But the the news is is that you're not going to get blindsided bl blindsided uh, like a lot of homeowners are getting right now when your taxes just go up like crazy or you get these huge insurance bills, uh, HOAs going up all over the place. You're not going to get blindsided. So I know that for this entire year, okay, what I have to pay is going to be consistent from month to month to month. And next year, obviously, again, I'm going to expect an increase in the lot rent, but still it's not going to be hundreds or thousands of dollars a month. Okay. Like what's happening to poor Michael down in Miami. We bought our house, small house. We don't have mortgage. We just enjoy. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's absolutely right. Yeah, just a little bit I have a different project, but it's just for me. <laughs> <laughs> We're happy. Yeah, and, and that's the whole thing, everybody. Again, this is the whole idea behind what Lily and I have been preaching for the past three or four years. It's an affordable alternative to those real estate costs here in Florida. I mean, you know, and again, I'm going to tell you, we've told you this many, many times, Florida is not cheap this is something that you need to really prepare for and to research before you make the commitment to down here you need to come down here to avoid any type of disappointment so again the first thing i'm going to tell you is get your finances under control eliminate as much debt as you possibly can don't bring all that extra baggage down here because it's just going to make things harder well that's unless you have a big income of five six seven eight nine thousand dollars a month now, that's totally different but for most people who, who we work with you know they have incomes of 3500 and less okay for each month so this is very important that you have everything under control before you get here so now oh, little mike my absolute favorite place to come after or before we leave downtown port no, pierce no, take a look no, <laughs> <laughs> happy easter ladies uh, all of those chocolate frosted without the sprinkles i'll take them all Jelly. Two jellies? Yeah. Two okay. Jellies. Two, jellies? two jellies? Right. Where are we going, Lily? You could pick them out. Um, the, um, Today. Blueberry, please. How about uh, two glazed? Two glazed. Right. And one double chocolate. That'll do it. So that's it. That's our Like Mike video today. Uh, little Mike here she didn't get to say much because I had everything all planned out for the entire week so she had no idea what I was going to talk about but you know again we just want to tell you guys hey uh, if you enjoyed this type of a video let us know uh, we'll be happy to do another like Mike video in the future uh, if not tell us that too but uh, again we appreciate you guys patronizing us and uh, we'll definitely see you on our next video so everybody take care bye bye I'm too short bye bye <laughs> <laughs>